To begin this video, I'd like to share a quotation I heard recently from Marcus de Sotoy on his TV show, The Code. In it, he says that calculating with imaginary numbers is the mathematical equivalent of believing in fairies. Personally, I think that's a lovely metaphor. But in all honesty, it makes that imaginary numbers to be something completely removed from reality. For me, the more I learn about imaginary numbers, the more I realise that actually, they're not very imaginary at all. And so this video is my attempt to explain the basic concepts behind imaginary numbers in an easy way, and make them no less mysterious than, say, negative numbers. I'm not going to prove anything here, but just demonstrate how to learn about them in a hopefully unconfusing way. In this video, I'll be introducing the concept that rotating can be considered as multiplication by a number. This might well seem a bit weird, but if you accept it, it will soon hopefully make a lot of sense. To start with, let's imagine you're walking forwards with a speed of one unit. Now let's say you want to turn around 180 degrees and keep your same speed. What number would you need to multiply your velocity by? Well, let's hope the answer is fairly obviously minus one. But now we need to distinguish between speed and velocity. Speed is how fast you're going, but velocity also indicates your direction. So whilst your speed is still one, your velocity is now minus one. If you want to turn back around, you would again multiply by minus one to turn through 180 degrees. Overall, you have multiplied by minus one twice and on 280 degree turns. So in total, we have multiplied by minus one squared equals one, which naturally takes us back to the start. If you were instead to multiply your velocity by minus a half, then you will not only turn around, but your speed would also halve. The size, or in math lingo, the magnitude of the number that you multiply by will affect your speed. If the magnitude is bigger than one, you'll go faster. If it's less than one, you'll go slower. And of course, if it's one, you will keep the same speed. Okay, so that's all pretty boring and obvious so far. Multiplying our velocity by any positive or negative number will still give us a velocity going forwards or backwards along our initial one-dimensional line. Now how about we introduce a two-dimensional world? What if we wanted to turn 90 degrees? Well, let us imagine that there is a number that we can multiply by to rotate 90 degrees. What do we know about it? Well, we know that if we rotate 90 degrees twice, we will have a turn of 180 degrees. In other words, if we multiply by a number twice, it is equivalent to multiplying by minus 1. Mathematicians call this number i, or occasionally j. It has the property that i squared equals minus 1. Now you may be thinking, in a 2D world, I can rotate 90 degrees in two different directions. So which is i? Well, by convention, i is a turn of 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So what is a turn of 90 degrees clockwise called? Well, if you think about it, a turn of 90 degrees clockwise is equivalent to a turn of 90 degrees anti-clockwise, followed by a turn of 180 degrees, or a rotation by i, and then minus 1. So a rotation of 90 degrees clockwise is just minus i. Now some more maths lingo. A number which lies on the normal number line, i.e. a negative, zero or positive number, is known as a real number. A number which is just some multiple of i is an imaginary number. And a number which is the sum of both a real number and an imaginary number is known as a complex number. For example, 2 minus a half i would be a complex number. It has a real part of 2, and an imaginary part of minus a half. So now comes an interesting question. What number do we need to multiply by to turn through 45 degrees? Well, just like before, two turns of 45 degrees equal a turn of 90 degrees. So the number we need to multiply by is actually the square root of i. The natural thought now might well be, oh no, we need to introduce yet more numbers. Well, actually, it's a bit easier than that. The square root of i is actually a complex number. In other words, it's a number which is the sum of a real part and an imaginary part. So let's look at the diagram we have so far. We can draw this diagram, called an Argon diagram, with 1, i, minus 1 and minus i, at 0, 90, 180 and 270 degrees anticlockwise from the start position, just like the rotations they represent. But one of the amazing things about this is that we can actually now find numbers representing different rotations by using this diagram. The first thing to remember is that if we want to keep the same speed, the number we multiply by must have a magnitude of 1. So we can draw a circle with radius 1, which passes through all numbers with a size or magnitude of 1. So if you want to find a number that represents a rotation of 45 degrees, it will lie on a circle and be at 45 degrees from the start position. I'll mark it on the diagram with a cross. Now let's zoom in a bit. We need to find the real and imaginary parts of our number. In other words, we need to find out how far a number is horizontally from 0, which I've marked in blue and called A, and how far it is vertically from 0, which I've marked in red and called B. These measurements will give us the real part and the imaginary part of our number, respectively. Notice that the triangle here is right-angled, so we can apply Pythagoras to it. 
giving us the equation a squared plus b squared equals 1, because the radius has length 1. In this case, we have a 45 degree angle, which means that our triangle is also isosceles, and so a equals b. This gives us the equation that 2a squared equals 1, so a squared is a half, and a is the root of a half. b is of course also root of a half, and so the number that we need to multiply by to rotate 45 degrees is root of half plus root of half i. Now we can quickly verify that this number is actually the root of i by multiplying it by itself using the standard rules for expanding out brackets. So doing this, this gives us four separate terms from the expansion. Now of course each of these terms contains a root half times a root of half, which of course equals a half. Also, we can notice that i squared is of course minus 1, so the half at the start cancels with minus half at the end, leaving two terms of a half i. These add together to of course give us i. This is a demonstration that using a diagram in this case gives us the right answer. In actual fact, the diagram always works, and this is one of the amazing properties of complex numbers. I'll just point out here that you can find numbers representing other rotations just as easily, by using a bit of simple trigonometry. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this quick and slightly quirky introduction to complex numbers, and I hope that this video has shown you that actually, imaginary complex numbers do make sense in the physical world, or at least they don't make much less sense than negative numbers do. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and please recommend it to anyone you think might be interested. Also, please leave me any feedback, positive or negative, below. Thanks for listening.